All right, folks, in today's video, we're going to talk a little bit about this LC meter. Uh, one of the things I wanted to cover right out of the gate to clear up any confusion is L is for inductance, C is for capacitance. So with a meter like this, we measure inductors and capacitors, and we do that when we're making things with electronics and we need to know the values of these particular components that we're going to put in devices. Where this really comes in handy for people like us, ham radio enthusiasts, are when we build antennas. And sometimes these antennas have inductors and capacitors in them. Or we might be building filters or traps or something like that. Or even doing kit building where we have to uh, put capacitors and inductors in the kit. So something like this is super duper helpful. Uh, when I bought it, I wasn't sure how much I was going to use it. I paid around $45 and I was thinking that uh, I might not get my money's worth and I'm very, very glad that I have it. So this is the LC meter that I bought and I wanted to mention that we have another one that we're going to take a look at today that came in this box and it was sent to me by June Tech. So I want to say thanks to June Tech for sending this out and I wanted to let everybody know that I was sent the one we are going to review free of charge in exchange. All right, well, let's see what comes in the box when you buy this and we're going to do this quickly so it's not an unboxing. And it looks like we get an instruction manual, which would be our quick start guide. Looks like we get a USB cable. You can power this off this USB cable. And then you get a couple of these test leads. And that looks like it's it. So here's the meter. It looks exactly like the other one I was showing you. Both have a June Tech sticker here with a barcode and uh, looks like a serial number and then the model number. The model of these meters is the two LC200A. Um, they do have a bail that works pretty nice. Uh, I've used mine like this before. And then it has this um, cutout here where you can actually mount this on, on the wall if you had it on like a, uh, a nail or a screw or something like that. I'm not sure why you would do that, but a lot of multimeters come this way. Um, <clears throat> I did want to mention, a lot of people say, well, can't you just do all this with a multimeter? And there are some multimeters that have the ability to measure uh, inductance and capacitance. So here's a cheap multimeter. This one's about $20. It's an AN8008. An um, and it does have the ability to measure capacitors, but uh, it doesn't have the ability to measure inductance. And the same thing with this little mini pocket flute. Uh, this is the 101. This can do capacitance, but it cannot do inductance. And a lot of inductance meters are really expensive, but uh, this is a really good value. It is um, an upgrade, I think, from the LC100A, um, essentially meaning that it is put inside this, this box or this kit. So I want to talk a little bit about some of the ports. So this is the uh, mini USB port that you have right here. Now, as far as I know, you're not able to extract data from this into a computer. Potentially, you could use this to flash firmware. I don't know. Um, but this is if you want to power this off of USB. And then it comes with this, uh, this barrel jack here. And this is if you wanted to run this off of 5 volts AC. Uh, some of these had a switch on them where you could switch between AC and DC, but I don't see that. This is the power on switch. But in order to use that, we're going to need to put some batteries in this device. So the battery case is actually extremely easy to access. Sometimes that can be a little bit of a chore on some multimeters. And it takes... All right, and then we have the meter is on. Across the top, we have a couple of different buttons here. This is a zero button that we use for calibration. High C and... Uh, high L or if we want to measure high capacitance or high inductance. Let me get a picture and I'll roll that in right now and you can see the different cutoffs that uh, you would need to use if you were, you would need to use these for if you were measuring components in that range. This allows you to toggle between capacitance and inductance. So here you can see measure capacitance with the C and then I hit the button and then it can now measure inductance. This is a function button that does a couple of things. So one, if I'm pushing the function button in and I hit this real quick, it makes a brighter light that you're not going to be able to see because of my camera. So I'm just going to hit that again and I'll go back. The other thing is, is that we are on the regular inductance and capacitance measurements. So when I hit this function button, it tells me the frequency that it is using to measure inductance in this case, if I turn it to capacitance. 
and I press it so it's using around uh, 605 kilohertz. Uh, if I go to high C, for example, and then I push this function, you might notice that my unit of measurement changed. And so that's just kind of a quick overview of how that stuff works. Um, here are your inputs, and these are just regular banana clips. Now, you could use any kind of plug that you wanted for this. For example, you could use multimeter probes. Um, if you did that, you would want to make sure that you calibrate this to zero out any inductance or capacitance that you would be incurring as a result of using longer probes. And we're going to do that with, with these real quick. So let me go ahead and get this bag open. And I got to tell you, man, I have trouble with these. Here we go. I got it. Never mind. So here are our clips. And let me just go ahead and untangle this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to plug them in. It's a very simple, easy thing to do. Now, once this happens, you want to go ahead and you want to calibrate this. I'll put the instructions up on the screen right here where you can see the instructions for calibration to just make sure you know I'm not making things up as we go along. But what I believe is that we calibrate these open to measure capacitance. So I just hold this in and it calibrates and now it's reading zero picofarad and it is ready to measure a component. So here's just a little breadboard that I keep around and I keep components on here that I use for various projects or testing and things like that. Uh, right here I have, and I have no idea what the value is. So right here I have a ceramic capacitor. And what you wanna do sometimes when you, when you measure capacitors is, is potentially make sure that they are fully discharged and not st storing any energy. So what I'm doing is I'm just shorting the legs of this capacitor on this razor blade to make sure there's no energy in here. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna connect this to the banana clips. And then we should get a rating or a reading. Now th this is super handy for me because when I do kit building and things like that, my eyes aren't that good and I can't read the values on these capacitors. So I just hook it up to here and then I can get a reading and know what, which component I'm working with. So this is close to 100 picofarad. So that's what this is, um, this capacitor. Actually, I know it's 100 picofarad because it's from a antenna build I did where I was using 100 picofarad capacitors. Um, so there, there's, there's my reading there. This does have a tolerance to it. So there at certain ranges and certain... Um, with certain components, there is a margin of error, plus or minus a certain percentage. Also, when they make these cap capacitors and any kind of electrical component, there's a tolerance there as well. So it's amazing that electronics works, <laughs> uh, to be honest with you, because everything has a little bit of a fudge factor to it. Here's another capacitor. Now this one, I definitely don't know what the value is, but this is a little teeny tiny one. Imagine trying to read that. So let me go ahead and hook that up and we can see it measured. And this is probably 500 picofarad with a little bit of a margin on there. All right, well, we've done that. We've covered that. Let's go over and take a look at inductance. And right now we're over range. And for inductance, when you run your calibration, you wanna actually make sure that the, these are connected. And we're already at zero, but we're just gonna go ahead and recalibrate anyway. So here we are at uh, zero micro Henry's and for inductors, I have a couple of them here on the, on the breadboard that we're going to take a look at or measure. So these are two coils that I made for this video. Let me see if I can get them out of here without damage. And these are both made with the same size magnet wire, but, and I believe they have the same number of turns. The only difference is, is being the size of the coils. So in ham radio, amateur radio, we make these for various things. Uh, same thing with electronics. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hook this one up and we're going to get a reading. And so this one's a 126 uh, micro Henry's and awesome 124. It's bouncing around a little bit. Let's go ahead. And the, and the reason I did this is I just wanted to show the difference that the size of the winding can make. All right. And here you can see the smaller one is measuring in at uh, 0.094 micro Henry's. So, like I said, I just wanted to show the difference between the size of these coils and what difference that would make. Um, one of the other things, one of the last things I wanted to show is this is actually, it looks like a capacitor. So when you see this, everybody's like, oh, that's a capacitor. This is actually an inductor. And let me see what we get with, with this baby. And that one is 1.14 microhenries. I don't remember what that one was and why I was using it. 
Anyhow, really simple product. I'll have some links below where you can check these out in more detail, but uh, I like them. I use these all the time and I find them reasonably reliable. So that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. Appreciate it.